Ramble. Thanks to Bombas for sponsoring this week's episode. Apparently Handmaid's Tale's been out for like weeks and we just missed it when we were on tour. Oh, I know that. Did you guys know that? Yeah, Becky's been watching Did you guys know that? I don't don't watch the show. Wait, it's back? Yeah, it's it's been back for weeks. like seven episodes out and Ariel's like, did you know this? I was like, no, I've been on tour. Oh my God, we've missed it. I had no idea. Well, welcome to the tripod. We are the Try Guys. You got Zach. Hey, you got Ned. What's up? You got Keith. Yeah. And Eugene's out again. He he's at Lollapalooza having the time of his life. Oh yeah. So Miles B is hanging out with us in the big boy chair. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of stuff today. We're talking about uh, Keith's two thousand dollar chicken finger mistake. Oops. (laughs) uh, (laughs) We've got actually we've got a bunch of Keith stories. So maybe we'll figure out one to throw to Ned too because I uh, I didn't plan any. Okay, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I got one for you. But but first, we're talking about the tour one more time because there's so much life that we're realizing that we missed. We we talked about this a little bit last week. We're, we're back from two months. This whole summer, we've been on the road. And we'll, we'll get to a, a secret in a second. But let's just start there. Like, holy shit, we missed the whole world. I didn't realize. So what else did we miss? It's like we're reemerging from a tomb. It, literally like because we slept machine. on a tomb in the butt. It, it does feel like you miss a lot of like the current events and you like hear about stuff kind of in passing from like fans, right. but you don't, we don't watch TV. You, no. you check Twitter. So you see like the biggest things Kinda, that you, you check, check Twitter. your email sort of, sort you're of. really just, just prioritizing like the two things that, you really need to read. There was one day where Ned was watching uh, Robert Mueller talking to Congress. I'm like, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, I was happening, watching that's that happening today. And, and I was I, like, yeah, and we're missing most know. of I, it. Not is it happening today. I hadn't heard anything about it. I had oh. no idea. I was so out of the loop. I felt terrible. I get those news digests, dog. You mm. like quick, snackable, bite-sized information. Actually, this is a funny thing that happened on tour. Uh, my, I was taking so many photos and videos that my phone was constantly at the full capacity of memory so i start it auto i have it set where it automatically uh puts apps into the cloud so like Mm. i don't have news on my phone and i I would then sometimes like to open instagram would have to go and like delete old things just to make enough (laughs) current memory that's funny yeah i'm I'm, i have an older phone i just last time i bought a a phone i was like you know what fucking max it out bro this was the max (laughs) max it out you got the big big you take a lot of photos i do you know you're you're a media machine i know and i'd never remember when we did the time analysis study (laughs) yeah six hours on both instagram and twitter individually this isn't that that's a lot of hours but how many photos do you think i have that's a whole season of Big Little Lies. 60,000. No, not that crazy. I have 12,000. I have 15, 16,000 photos. Do you keep them all on your phone? Like you don't offload them? Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> everybody. That's risky. Everybody. Who's, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like really being, risky. No, no, no. I back that up every now and then, but I like being able to access the memories here and now, right? Like well, I don't sure. want them in the somewhere else. I want them here. Mm. I want right. them now. On but. My phone. But what if you break your phone in the toilet? Yeah, then I'm fucked. I'll do you delete them. old text messages or do you keep them on your phone forever? I try to keep as try many keep as I can them. forever. Same. Yeah, yeah. I want to see I want to see the... I, I, w- I want to get them receipts. I'll tell you, I had to <laughs> in my other uh, memory. It's like, okay, well, I guess there's a setting where I can delete messages after a year. And that's a bummer. Oh, when that's you go sad. to text, oh. When you go to text a friend and you see nothing and you're like, oh my God, we haven't talked to yeah. you in a year. <laughs> no. Do you have? Do you also keep Facebook, which does keep everything, and then you're like, "Oh, that was the last thing oh, we were talking about." Years. Oh, we haven't talked for seven years. Well, what about when you go to text somebody, and the last thing that you were talking about was either you ignoring them or like a weird conversation? You're like, "Well, now I can't text you because mm-hmm. the thing right above it is." Yeah. Oh, take it back. I only want to keep all of the messages from me and my wife until all time. And then everything else you can delete after like a day or two. <laughs> so Maggie has all of our text messages on her computer. Oh, it like goes into nice. iMessages. Nice. So like mm. she one day, very this was very early on dating, so it was only like a few months to scroll back. But she like went back to the very first text messages she ever sent. We ever sent to each other and uh, made fun of me. It was good. Well, mm-hmm. I'll tell you guys, Wes is walking now. He's like full on walking. Let's I mean, talk about I think that. He's we, running. We mentioned it a little <laughs> bit. I don't know if I told this on the podcast. I don't think you did. Oh, okay. Well, this was a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Wes is walking. I, you, you know, it's funny. Know. That's the story I remembered. I was like, oh, we got one. We yeah. got a Ned yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So 
I was so worried about missing a milestone. I knew that he was in this like hand holding kind of like, you know, a milestone. I I didn't get it, and I'm not even going to acknowledge it. That's, well, I that's was not there. Close I enough. was there when he took his first steps. So we call <laughs> it a milestone because he does this sort of stuff, <laughs> and it really gets under my skin, and that's why he does it. Here I am telling a beautiful a story. Heartfelt. I say one word that just happens to have miles in it, and you just suddenly derail it. <laughs> I got this really new car. Bad it goes pun. like zero to sixty miles per hour. It, would wow. we do it for that? Would we do it it's, anytime we say miles? Jesus, really? I, I'm trying to do one for Zach now, but I can't because I guess <laughs> I, I will say when people say exactly in public, I tur- do turn my head. Right, mm. exactly. Mm. Hey. So hey. Wes is taking his first step. This is a very sweet story. No, hey, <laughs> Ned, 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 have the confidence. You know, we we love the story. <laughs> well, Ned mile- was so worried about missing a milestone. And we were about to go back on tour. This was our July 4th break. Mm. Yeah. All right, I'm back in. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was really worried. It's like we're gone for a month. What what, what little tiny things would I miss? Because he, he's like babies. They develop so much in just one week. You can go from like, uh, you know, walking to just pff, driving a car 60 mm-hmm. miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, so i knew that he was about to walk any day now he would walk with uh, holding hands he would walk one step and then he would fall over right what a any day it would have happened any day (laughs) and then here i am i go on tour but we had a july 4th break we went to santa barbara and we had this beautiful family weekend at the beach it was really fun but then i had to go back on tour and two hours before i had to leave for the airport it's like a switch turned, and he suddenly was walking all over the place. It's awesome. It was awesome. It was amazing. I was there for that moment. He was just walking. It's like twenty steps. It, it's not. Whoa! Like he went they, from z- yeah, one he went step from to twenty one steps. Step to twenty. It's not like they just. It's not like this gradual thing where oh, oh, I saw five steps. Very it's just surprising. Like a switch flipped, mm-hmm. and suddenly he knows how to balance. Did he? Like when you ride a bike. Like you, you go I, from yeah. not being able to do it, and then mm-hmm. suddenly you're fine. And yeah. now you can totally, you're yeah, just that's totally crazy. Good. Did he look proud of himself? Like oh, after yeah. he did it? Yeah, I think I have a video. Of was he like, I "Fuck you"? Yeah. yeah, he was excited. And so now we then I went away for two weeks for the rest of the tour, and now I've come back, and he's like full he's on a walker. Like, <laughs> he can do squats. You do what? jumping jacks. <laughs> you got him jumping. right into I CrossFit. Know, sure. I mean, yeah. like he's it, been backflipping like crazy <laughs> all around the good house. Good joke. Good joke. But seriously, he can walk. He can turn around he can like squat down squat up he can walk over small barriers like a uh, uh you know like a doorstep it's wow it's, he can go down steps while holding a hand it's like it's like in two weeks he suddenly oh. went from like baby's first steps to like <laughs> parkour <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah parkour <laughs> that's awesome what's crazier too is that we actually changed our flight like with 24 hours before that, mm-hmm. so the original flight that we were supposed to be on, you would have missed I would his have first missed steps. It. I know, and oh, we changed yeah. it because we like flying out of Burbank. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. A side note was we got to see baby's first steps. Let's see if I have a video here. This was from just this morning. Well, Keith, you have to describe it. So Wes is looking adorable with his little cherub face, and he's looking I at the he's camera just, confused. This, this is the wrong video. He's, he's like, just grabbing going at the camera <laughs> as he does. You well, guys talk about something else. I'll bring up a video and keep. Well, I want to talk more it. about our our first week back, but first we got some secrets. You yeah. rate us five stars in the iTunes store. We you give us a secret, and then we read the secret on the air, but we change your name. It's a little fun thing we do just for us. Go ahead, Miles. Well, thank you so much for going on there and rating us five stars. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is a really saucy little secret. Can I get a fake name, Keith? Bonnie Ierson. Bonnie Ierson, the saucy little girl. <laughs> the most real name you've given yeah, ever. I feel like I know <laughs> no, I, I never Ierson. pretty plan it. I just say whatever words come out of my mouth. <laughs> if Bonnie Ierson. You know what's a weird realization? One of my mom's friends is named Cindy, and I realized I haven't met a youth named Cindy ever. Huh. Hmm. I've only the only Cindy's I know were born before 1965. I don't know any young Cindy's. All hmm. right, here's the first known video of Wes walking. Oh, fu- oh, oh fuck. he's walking. Oh, he's just he's, he's walking. Doing it. But he does he, that he like looks hilarious. It. He does that bow legged like squat cowboy. Yeah, walk, he's right? sort of like waddling. But now two weeks later, he's like, oh, oh. He stepped on a tablet. Slipped. <laughs> slipped. I, I am re- I'm reading a book about brains, and it 
very hilariously causes childhood a problem because <laughs> it's like that it was mm -hmm. a solution for uh heads being able to fit like through the mm -hmm. canal oh, yeah. but like then the problem it created is childhood where mm -hmm. we are totally ill prepared for life and underdeveloped mm -hmm. and it's it's written very funny okay we'll cut that out that's uh, funny. Uh, no that sounds funny it's very, it's it's very funny imagine before we're done i'm just trying to just brag like, about reading <laughs> You know, fully formed human just mm -hmm. plopped out. Like a deer. Can, well, that's yeah. what every other animal is. Yeah, like right? wearing right. jeans and a t-shirt. It's more. <laughs> it, you know, it's smart. It's yeah. just funny to see childhood listed as a problem because, like, that's like mm. in the realm of evolution, it's such a burden to our species. It is tough. It we sure die a lot. Is. I mean, you're looking at a new father that <laughs> spends a lot of time caring for his kid and i love it but imagine if i was a caveman and i had to spend me every hour of my day killing boars <laughs> and making fires be uh, caring for a kid would be tough yeah, yeah. Right i guess us finding yeah. things cute is just evolution's way of tricking us into caring about a thing yep yeah totally it is. Yeah. that's true yeah, yeah. All right, Miles, hit us with that secret. All right, Bonnie Cindy. Ierson. So, sorry, that's right. Bonnie, Bonnie. Bonnie. Not Iverson. Bonnie. Bonnie. Not Iverson. Iverson. I said Iverson. Iverson. Right, okay. I was, no, I was oh, yeah, just, yeah, checking it, with Iverson. you. Yeah. Iverson. Bonnie. Bonnie writes, so when I was little, I used to love to draw and read stuff about people who were sick. To my young, innocent... Wait, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just, normal. Mm -hmm. To my young, innocent mind, I only knew I found those two, those types of things very interesting, and I didn't know why I liked it so much. Well, everything changed around the time I became a teenager. I did some research on the internet and listened to some videos and discovered I have a full-blown sneeze kink. Oh, People wow. sneezing just turns me on. Oh, yeah. And I still don't understand it completely. I just know that I find people who sneeze a lot. Oh, my God. I'm going to go get some pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of this. Okay. attractive. Oh, no. well, I, Keith, <laughs> Keith's getting pepper. Uh, I've never told anyone about this. I really don't want to sneeze right now. I have, I have a question. We named the person Bonnie, but yeah. do we know if this is a man or a woman? I'm just curious. Uh, Bonnie, uh, let me check. It, it doesn't say. I think it sounds like a girl, but it How could be a guy. Why would you say that, Miles? Uh, because I don't know. Why would you say that? Why oh, would you even say that, Miles? Because Miles, why would you say that? <laughs> I'm a little freak. <laughs> just it's just like a girl. What yeah, they write like a girl. Say? What are you trying to say? Yeah, I mean, it's trying to say they're girly. Jeez. I'm just they love to draw and read. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that's for chicks. Imagine you're like, I, this could only happen in college when you're just sleeping with someone you don't know. And all of a sudden she's like, can you just, just sneeze for me? Just sneeze. <laughs> oh, okay. Keith, Keith is back. I don't want to Keith, you were so fast. I don't want to He has a this. bowl. <laughs> he has a bowl no, and a pepper uh, shaker. This is, the, no, this, this is the pepper uh, challenge. <laughs> the pepper sneeze challenge. The pepper sneeze boner challenge. I always Bonnie. sneeze when I'm like cooking with pepper because when you like put spices into a hot pan, a lot of spices rise mm -hmm. up in the steam and they go in your face. You know, and I black didn't. Black pepper makes me sneeze. Like I didn't crazy. question huh. it when you went to get pepper, but that is a thing in cartoons, right? Pepper makes people sneeze. <laughs> Keith, right, Keith, is, Keith, is Keith is going for putting it. his nose in the bowl. All right, of everyone, pepper. watch this and see if we pop boners. Yeah. He's not doing He's it. He's getting in there. <laughs> it's because it's performance Keith. anxiety. Keith, you're right, you're totally just right. relax. <laughs> Keith, I just need okay. you to know that Bonnie cannot get off unless you shove that pepper <laughs> up your nose. I, I will say my biggest complaint about this podcast is that people can't get off to it. So yeah. I would like to correct that today. I've been meaning I don't to make want to like snort the pepper. <laughs> don't right. snort the pepper. Oh, Ned's going for it. He's Ned's got the, the bowl. He's, he's putting his nose in the bowl. I, just, I, I just feel like I need to just do it. Keith, Bonnie. what if you put your nostril upside down and do the pepper shaker directly? Oh! Uh, whoa! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> whoa! <laughs> I, yo, by the way, you're a good-looking sneezer. Thank you. <laughs> do you There's think, no Bonnie, we adore this secret because I've never encountered anything like it. I have no judgments, <laughs> just just amazement. Oh, uh -huh. oh, oh, here it goes. Uh, no, yawn, just yawn. Yawn. Oh, oh, shit! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fuck, that's so hot. <laughs> wow. I guess I, I get it a little bit. This is my favorite podcast There's ever. like anticipation and then there's just a rush. Yeah. Do you think it's just the sound of the sneeze or the visual of sure someone's face of, totally losing it's like, control? I mean, I've heard of the like wanting to get off on about popping balloons. It, it feels very similar. You never know when it's going to happen. And then when it does, ooh, ooh it's so exciting. Ooh. I think, I'm sure certain I've told this story before, but my biggest fear 
in life, I'm a big uh, uh, allergy season victim, is sneezing while driving on the highway. Oh, it's oh, terrifying. It. It's not good. It's so you, scary. When you sneeze, yeah. you have no choice. Your eyes are closing right. for half a second. And who knows? And what oftentimes could happen. it's hard to keep your hands in the same spot. Yeah, I'm a violent yeah. sneezer. I'm <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Wow, uh, that's a wonderful. Imagine secret. if you were mm-hmm. also I, I getting a boner. <laughs> you gotta blow your Keith's nose. gonna blow his nose. <laughs> Keith is gone. So when we were in school, if you wanted to be cool, you had to be up on it. You had to have your Pokemon cards. You had to have your Pokemon video game. Basically, yeah. anything Pokemon. For me, it was Pogs. I mean, can you imagine if they had Pokemon Pogs? It's like people know cool when they see it. You were cool if you had it, and you weren't if you did it. Now, it's Bombas socks that bring out all the envy on the schoolyard. Bombas socks are, I'm going to go ahead and say it, they're the bomb. They're the most comfortable kid socks. They're colorful. They're literally bursting with color. And if you know me, you know that the ankles are something that I find very, very important. They are the most comfortable socks ever for kids or for adults, frankly. They're colorful, literally bursting with color. They even have a colorful bee on them. Oh, they are so comfortable. Oh, it's just like a little hug around your foot. They got those great little no-show socks, or you have a little secret. You have a fun design. It's a secret just for you. So send your kids back to school with the socks that keep them comfy, colorful, and ready to take on a new year. Your kids are going to have a terrible year unless you get them these socks. Look, kids are vicious. And if they're, go- if they're rolling up to school without Bombas socks, whoa, watch out. It's going to be a rough fourth grade. And since Bombas donates a pair of socks for every pair purchased, you should get yourself some too. I'm in fact, I'm wearing Bombas socks right now. You and are. I bet you can't even see it because they're the no shows. Essential for any hot ankle look. I, I don't know if you've played with no shows, but some of them, they just slip right off your foot all the time. I These get it loose in the ankle. I, yeah, I hate it. These are snug, but not too snug. They are good. And my ankles have never looked better. So visit bombas.com slash try guys and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash try guys for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash try guys. Oh, we'll wait for you for one second. You know what? Blow your nose just for the people that have that king. <sighs> yeah, that's true. It's <laughs> oh, no. an ASMR I'm podcast. so sad Eugene isn't here so we can he get all like excited the- about Interesting kinks. Yeah. That's I'll, I'll true. pretend to be Eugene. Do it. Oh, you haven't heard about sneeze kinks, baby? <laughs> <laughs> he would They're never say he never says man. baby. That's what <laughs> yeah, say, but baby. I always imagine he's saying baby. Because it's like it's like he says it like he's saying baby. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I, I know what I'm you like, mean. Eugene, where is this coming from? Welcome back, Keith. That was wow. fun. That was, nice. that was a fun, that was a real fun, exciting moment. I yeah, that the was office. good. Was, I yeah, got like pepper. That. I couldn't find the pepper at first, and I was like, I only have red pepper flakes. I really don't want to put those up. <laughs> <laughs> All happened. right. Wow. Well, this is our first week back, and it, I don't know about you guys, because we haven't gotten to talk. Oh, oh is this, this another There's one pepper coming? in the air now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely have some pepper in my nostrils. <laughs> Well, I feel left out now. Should I give a sniff? No, we'll never stop sneezing. Yeah, keep, so you know, if, you're, going, if you think you're going to sneeze, if you look upwards at really? light, it helps you sneeze. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say it helps you not sneeze. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it no. helps you sneeze. That you, is a thing. Every time I, yeah. I leave sunlight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sunlight, it makes me sneeze. I thought I was allergic to the sun. You're a sun sneezer. <gasps> I'm definitely a sun sneezer. That's, that sounds like a slur in like a fantasy you universe. dirty sun sneezer. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Oi, we don't serve snud sneezers here. <laughs> you take your sun sneezing and get out of here. Yeah, I um, I definitely always have been the, like, if you walk out of, like, a restaurant or a grocery yeah. store and it's a bright day and the sun is just going, you just mm-hmm. sneeze. Yeah. You just go for it. Oh. Victor Sun Sneezer, yeah. the greatest uh, pirate this world has ever seen. <laughs> what do you think Sun Sneezer's profession would be? Well, is like he a looter or like a bandit? Demons. They work for the oh. sun and they have to kill the darkness. That's oh. kind of where I'm that's, going. You know, and they use like instruments, actually. So and like, you guys are chill with Victor as the first name. I just kind of yeah, landed no, that, on yeah, it. That's good. I think that's good. All right, that feels cool. good to me. They who use like sneeze would, powers. Like who to, would play Victor Sun Sneezer? Timothy Chalamet. Marlon Brando? No. Did you say Timothy Oliphant? Because I'm down said, with that. I said Timothy Chalamet, but... Oh, wow. D- very different Timothy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you get put put some LBs on Timothy Chalamet no, no, so he's not a little no, shrimp. No, no, I'm not seeing Chalamet. I think it's he's a rugged, a lot fat, of fat LBs to, on. Fat Timothy Chalamet. It could be Y-A yeah. type of... Mm. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. Like, you know. I'd like to see Timothy Chalamet put on some weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious about that. Yeah. Don't you... Don't you controversial? This is, <laughs> is, is that don't kind of, you tell Timothy what to do with his bod? You write like a it's, girl, and this boy needs to bulk up. <laughs> Timothy's yikes. got a tight little yikes, bod. Miles, you know we live in 2019. <laughs> is it Not bad okay. to tell Timothy Shalom okay. <laughs> that I want to see him bigger? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just like. I feel like. I mean, like action. Poor Timothy has had a really rough life. <laughs> I have He's no idea. He's had nothing idea handed to him. What uh, any of these celebrities look like? I, I, you're saying names Timothy, like. Timothy, no, it's like, the the guy in the, the with the, call the me by boy your name. and the guy. It's Didn't like it. about. But you know what it is. You know, yeah, but I don't Oscar. know who it's, the people are. He's the main seen, boy who's not the Army Hammer. Boy. That doesn't help me know what the he looks prodigy. like. The <laughs> prodigy. He's got with the curly hair and what we're He's saying a wonderful is actor. Skinny. I'm proud of him. He's very talented. I love him. He was he was nominated. You love him. I love him. He's my favorite. Favorite, but I don't know anything about him. <laughs> he was nominated for an Oscar and he's only he's 12. Like 19, 19, 17, 19, 17, 12. And I think 14. he went to the same school as someone else and I forget. Hmm. Smart, smart, it was smart a, boy. Smart so boy. No, it was a boy. No. It was a, and one of them really? was really cool and one of them, oh, nah. Look uh, up, look up right now. I'm Timothy <laughs> Chalamet. <laughs> high school? High school. <laughs> All right. And one of them was, they were both, this is gonna. You're gonna be like, oh, that's a cool fact. Victor okay. Sun sneeze. Timothy Chalamet, LaGuardia High School, 2013. Ansel, second question. Who did he? Ansel wait. Elgort. There it is. Oh. Timothy Chalamet. Wow. Ansel, I was Ansel about Elgort. Ansel Elgort actually as Victor Sun sneeze. He, he would, would be great, great as Victor <laughs> Sun Yeah, we did it. Oh my god. Ah, yeah. Is out there slaying demons. Oh fuck. Yeah. Ansel's great. Bringing the light into the world. You know, he tried to be a pop star. No. Yeah, Ansel, he oh, yeah. Have, like, he's a DJ. Wasn't more of a hip-hop star? I don't know, but I, oh. I blocked it. I yeah. like him, though. He's good. I, I support Ansel. He's very tall. It mm. surprised me. Look up mm. how tall he is. How tall is Timothy <laughs> How tall was no, he in no, high school? Ansel. <laughs> how tall Ansel Elgort? <laughs> he's 6'3". Yeah, he's, he's pretty a tall, tall man. That's as he's tall big. as me. That's very That's tall. tall. Maybe I should be Victor Sun Sneeze. No. Yeah. No, oh, no, no, no. Well, pff, Gonna have to add some LBs. I, I think I would be better served as being one of the demons he kills. Yeah, no, your name yeah, is. Yeah, you'd be a funny demon. Yeah. Your name yeah. is Chester Spirefeld. I'm a demon. You're a, a demon. demon from the spire realm. And yeah. They use like sneeze powers. That's what the Snazzy Sneezers do. No, like, he just happens no, to sneeze. Oh, <laughs> got it. Yeah, I like Is this that. just slowly becoming our movie sequel podcast? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> We're just gonna look, look he uses the power of the sun to fight demons. So all of his weapons are imbued with sunlight. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, and so when he like unsheaths it, it's like, that's cool. Yeah. From the podcast that brought you nasty <laughs> <laughs> comes the summer blockbuster hit, Victor Sun Sneeze. <laughs> Was it Sun Sneezer? Is it Sun Sneezer or Sun Sneeze? Sun Sneezer. I think he's yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. Sneezer. He sun is the Sun Sneezer. That's yeah. right. The, oh, that's a better the title. Sun yeah. the, the Sun, sun Sneezer. sneezer. <laughs> Actually, just Sun Sneezer. <laughs> sun Sneezer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, drop the the. It's much cooler. Yeah, at that point, now I do want to hear Sun Sneeze. Sun sneeze is like an interesting title. I'm like, oh, what's that about? Oh, and yeah. I, I actually, hearing Sun Sneeze, I definitely want a theme song written mm -hmm. by a prominent artist, Mumford and Sons. Uh, like <laughs> an action theme song by Mumford and Sons. <laughs> and or the Lumineers. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine with either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, they're and the they, same. And they happen to be having a concert at the climax <laughs> when like... Him and his love interest, who's obviously a, a mortal. So yeah. Oh, you're a sun season. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the credit song or <laughs> plays yeah. during the movie? Both. All the whole time. It never <laughs> stops playing. <laughs> it's 120 minutes of nonstop Mumford action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always when I, when you hear the songs that like people <laughs> sing about the movie in the credits, I always feel like they should have just played it in the actual movie. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm always bummed by that. I'm like the Men in Black song, in Men in Black sung by Will Smith, should have just gone. Should have been in it in the movie. Yeah, there's definitely enough montage moments where right. you just put that in. Yeah, I rewatched uh, Goonies on on the airplane, and they have uh, Cindy Lauper who made the song Goonies Are Good Enough. It literally is just playing on MTV, like on the TV in the movie. Oh yeah, that's cool. What was that movie with Denzel Washington where he's like a gangster? Training and, Day. 
What? Running Day? No. no. American Gangster. Oh, American, American Gangster. Gangster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The trailer song is amazing. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ain't no love in the heart of the city. And they never play it once in the movie. It's upsetting. Oh, it's always a bummer. The tra- like, the trailer song, I was like, yeah, I, like, Googled it. I, like, the bad version of The bad version of that, people forget, is the opening of Back to the Future is a nightmare. They play this Huey Lewis in the News song, like, seven times. And the movie refuses to start. They just keep playing a Huey Lewis song. Y'all I don't know. remember the. Be- I've I've seen it recently too. Yeah, I don't it remember goes that. again and again and wow. again. Huey Lewis wow. in the news. Huey Lewis and, and the news. Wait, what, what am I? Yeah, now I, like American Psycho. You know Huey <laughs> Lewis. Huey Lewis in the news. We always <laughs> joke that Lubberger could have been called Huey Lewis and the Keith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's funny. <laughs> yeah, you really blew it. Yeah, I know we should have. So guys, did anyone see Hobbs and Shaw last weekend? <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm so amped. I, I want to. I see really want to. I have I not been this amped about a movie. Free great. Yeah, yeah, y'all know I fucks with The Rock hard. But you also like Vin Diesel, so how do you feel oh, right. about this? Yeah, I know that they have a feud, but I, to me, they're both familia. Yeah, what, what I, happened to their familia? I, okay, all right. You That's want me to drop pretty, the backstory? Yeah. All right, so. Fill the tease, act. So Vin Diesel, very controlling man. The right. Rock, also a big personality. Mm. Uh, they got into some fights on the set of Fast and Furious, um, I, I believe it comes from the fact that Vin Diesel is insane. <laughs> he, 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 uh, re- repeatedly, like, there are just stories of him, like, he'll just stay in his trailer and will be rewriting scenes and will delay the shoot for hours. And because, Whoa. which, like, then people, like, the joke is always, like, who's writing those movies? But he really, really cares about mm-hmm. every line of dialogue, wow. and I love him for it. Someone like The Rock is the busiest man in the world and every second of his time. I'm kind of projecting what I assume happened here, Uh but as an avid watcher of both, I think I am right. Mm. Um, So my guess is that The Rock just doesn't have time for this bullshit versus Vin Diesel, who's a true artiste, Mm -hmm. uh, needs the time to find and let the art find him. So they had a falling out. That's why they were barely in. Uh, you gotta build in the. Together. You gotta build artsy fartsy time into the schedule. I, mm-hmm. I agree. But what is motivating me to say, "Let's race, motherfucker"? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand where I'm coming from in this moment. <laughs> so, so they they fractured uh, the Rock into his own franchise wow. within the Fast and Furious universe. Which I think is a great idea. So, 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 so why do I only drink Corona? <laughs> there's actually so there's a whole Vanity Fair article detailing their feud. Oh, oh. fuck yeah! You and, got a link that oh, to you me, got dude. Tea now. Put a, it in the comments of the YouTube link yeah. of the podcast. <laughs> well, this is awesome. There's a lot here, but Vin, a highlight is that The Rock posted an Instagram story. And he wrote family. I this. Family or wrote an Instagram caption saying family's going to have differences of opinion and fundamental core beliefs. Yeah, that's to me, different. <laughs> con- to me, conflict can be a good thing when it's followed by great resolution. I was raised on healthy conflict and welcome it. And like any family, we get better from it. Yeah. What does that mean? Fundamental core differences, <laughs> though. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's really. Well, I, bet, <laughs> I bet you one of the core differences is that. The Rock was like, yo, I should just be the star of this shit. And Vin Diesel's like, back the fuck off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know this. The Rock refers to himself as Franchise Viagra. (gasps) That's true. Which is the greatest thing you could ever be. But look at his track record. He comes into franchises that are already existing and or dying and then just pumps them back to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. Here's, a, here's another quote. From I didn't think goal. Baywatch was that good, though. Nah, I wasn't. No, it wasn't. I finally I watched Jumanji, watch though. and enjoy it. Jumanji's I amazing. Laughed. I finally watched Jumanji. Oh, Jumanji's That movie's great. awesome. It's so good. I cannot believe I was waiting. You know what will happen? I, I saw it the first week of Movie Pass and my dog was barking and I'm like, oh, cool, I'll just come back. I can leave because who cares? It was when, when he was a very baby puppy mm-hmm. and I had very thin walls with neighbors. I never went back to watch Watch it. Uh-huh. I laughed out loud several times. And you know who's a great actor? Nikki Joe. She the lead? Nick Jonas. Oh. <laughs> I, got, oh. I got a little too tipsy when I watched it the first time and fell asleep in the theater. That's so fun. Here's another quote from D- Vin Diesel on the feud. He wow, said, I can't believe we're just doing Vin Diesel the rock feud this whole podcast. <laughs> Fuck my notes. This is awesome. <laughs> he's, he's, I, we're doing Sun Sneezer and the rock dog. This is, this is my drink. We, we of 20 minutes off of one of the secrets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a full-on science experiment and everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Vin Diesel said, uh, we still love each other. That's my boy. When I was making that difficult decision, should there be an eight or not, I called Dwayne and he said, brother, I will be there shoulder to shoulder with you to make sure it's the best movie in history. <laughs> and he delivered. <laughs> At my house, he's Uncle Dwayne, and I'm proud of that. Wow. Yeah. I, but I'll also make nine without you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> My favorite part of any movie ever made is the end of Fast and Furious 5 where the... Or no, six? There's this incredible yeah. moment where they stand face to face, but instead of fanning, standing face to... Like, they keep walking closer, but then they walk shoulder to shoulder staring past each other. <laughs> And in my mind, it's like if they dare to look each other's in the eye, they'll just start furiously making out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's really it's so much wonderful. I mean, just the, the energy, the, the yeah. connection. Passion. He's so preposterously ripped, The Rock. The Rock. Is, rock. He's too big. Yeah. Like, what do you even do with that? He's so much bigger than other Probably. people. Probably could use to stand to get a couple more <laughs> LBs. Yeah. <laughs> what if I think it's about crazy he Imagine used... Timothy Chalamet's yeah, face training. on the rock's body. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Oh my God. Oh my that's God. a star. Oh. Yeah. That's Whoa, awesome. That's weird. He used to be a pro wrestler, which is like, it's literally a bodybuilder like show and yeah. he's bigger bigger than now he was yeah. when he threw men not in just the a little air. bit he's like <laughs> he's much like twice this he used to like pick people up like and like throw them he like he could like he was one of the like fighters like oh he's strong enough to like lift one of the giants like yeah like like the actual giant wrestlers like, yeah. Wow. yeah i did have a moment uh before i did my hair restoration journey i was like fuck now i won't ever be cast in a fast and furious movie they're all bald. Oh, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're all just macho, hot, bald men. It's well, awesome. You could shave down for the role. I would. I, hi, my name's Zach Kornfeld, willing to shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> why, why can't you be one of the guys who like uh, works behind the desk in the auto body shop? Yeah, <laughs> just like there. That's in awesome. that universe, they also can all kick ass. Yeah. That was Ludacris's job. He was the tech guy, and yeah. now he's also Jason Bourne. Yeah, when you say tech guy, he was installing radios, and <laughs> yeah. now he's the world's best hacker. Do you know, <laughs> and this is why I adore this franchise so much, the first Fast and Furious movie is, a hi- is, is, a ba- is basically a Point Break remake. Do you know what they're stealing? Uh, They're stealing cars? DVD players. Oh. That is the big <laughs> like <laughs> FBI investigation is that they are stealing DVD players and they're doing insane driving stunts to do so. Wow. That is so antiquated and adorable. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It is so quaint. They were Good expensive margins on that back though. in the day. That's yeah. true. They were expensive. I remember when my mom came home with a DVD player for the first time? I was so fucking jacked. Well, you know how much DVD players used to cost? Two thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what also costs two thousand dollars? Classic chandeliers in historic <laughs> theater venues oh, around the country. No. I learned this. Well, actually, it costs more than that. The repair work hour costs two thousand dollars because in One Boston, hour? no, it's an eight-hour workday. Shut the fuck up. I'm not kidding because it's a union theater. Oh, so union theater like means like there you. has to be a minimum time, a minimum amount of people, et cetera, et cetera. But back um, it all the way up. Okay, so in our live show. Um, Aside from me harassing DJ Khaled, uh, <laughs> another thing that I do is I throw chicken fingers, chicken tenders to the audience because Tim Meadows wouldn't get pizza with me. So I'm showing the, the world that if they want to eat with me, I'm giving them that opportunity in our live show. It's this incredible moment of just pure chaos. It's Keith asks, who wants to eat fried chicken? I bring out two or two sometimes four buckets of fried chicken on somewhere a between table. 75 and 125 people chicken tenders. go fucking nuts yeah. it is bonanza it is people jumping out of their seats it, you've never seen anything like it and what i love about it too is that it's something that we discovered during the tour right we the first show we we did something totally different for the first what four or five shows three or four yeah and and one day keith just goes you know i kind of just i think people just actually want to eat fried chicken with me what if i i don't know, like I just throw it at them. <laughs> so the first show we did it, I actually just handed out one bucket of fried chicken. Oh, and it was like an eight piece bucket. I don't remember that. And I just walked through the aisles and I threw, <laughs> and I threw one piece, only one piece to the balcony and someone in the balcony caught it. And, and I was that's like, awesome. And it was magical. And I was like, oh, wow, that's it. That's the so moment. The next show, I was like, let's get chicken tenders because I can't be throwing bones. <laughs> And I was like, maybe I'll just stay on the stage. And it all, you know, it came from like, we're really designing the show. Like we had a part where Zach goes into the audience. I didn't want to steal that energy of going to the audience for the first time right up top. So I'm like, what? I need to do something interactive, but I'm going to stay on the stage and I'm going to just throw fried chicken 
at everyone. Well, and also every night we got tweets that someone either got pegged in the face or in the chest with chicken <laughs> and they the were hair. thrilled. So yeah, so I'm throwing chicken. So every show basically after I've sung and danced and all this jazz, I'm just hurling chicken tenders. <laughs> I actually had Zach come in halfway through the tour because there were so many. It was taking too long. And I just like, weirdly enough, was the honored, energy the was way. still hot in the room for the entire six minutes it took me to throw all the chicken. But I'm like, this is just too long. It's <laughs> just taking too much time. Yeah, I'm changing and I look backstage and like it's three minutes into the segment and there are still people standing up screaming, screaming for, for fried a chicken. crazy amount of time. We also we for never food. tell any of the venues that we're doing this. No. And this and we're in the most classic theaters across <laughs> all of America. Antiques. That, antiques. Yeah. And beautiful the theaters. Stagehands love it. Yeah. So <laughs> the thing is that in these classic theaters and we had such big audiences that we had people in the balconies. Yeah. And I was like, it's so much fun for me from stage to throw pieces of chicken hundreds of feet <laughs> into the balcony. And like I got really good at throwing chicken tenders. <laughs> like I learned how you throw them because they don't throw like baseballs. They throw like chicken tenders. So you really have to think about how you're going to throw it. You got to basically hold it in the center of your fist and throw it like a rock because it <laughs> flaps it like it, it's you know it's loose it's chicken and if it's been sitting in the bin too long it steams so the skin will fall off it makes a huge mess but mm -hmm. anyway i just got really into throwing it really far uh, so zach would throw it down to the the lower audience and i would pretty much only chuck it <laughs> to the top to the back i'm throwing it as hard as i can would you try and like spiral it like a football you know, some little rotation action some, some were spiralable some were a little flat, so I threw them more like ninja stars, Ooh. shurikens perhaps, or knives essentially. So there were different styles of chicken, but I figured out how to throw them all. And I've been doing this for 15 shows by the time we get to the Schubert Theater in Boston. <laughs> I'm great at it. I'm tossing, I'm throwing. It's really one of, became one of my favorite parts of the whole show. But Boston was sold out and had two balconies. And the Whoa. nature of the balconies was set so that they were a little bit closer because there were two balconies. And I was like, I can get it to the top balcony. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm just chucking it as hard as I can to the people who are the furthest away. And also, like, it's straight up. So it's not just, I'm not throwing hundreds of feet. I'm throwing hundred feet up. So I'm fighting gravity. I'm throwing as hard as I can. And on the second to last tender that I have, <laughs> I'm like, I only got two tenders left. I got to get it to this balcony. I, don't, I had thrown it the whole time and I'd hit... The, the barrel, I hit it like maybe three times. I got it to somebody in the balcony. I'm like, no, I got to get at least one more up there. And I rear back and I'm throwing it like a pitcher. I'm like fully <laughs> leaning back, using my leg as a lever and then whipping my body forward. <laughs> I'm doing arm stretches before and after this segment. I'm committing to this bit. And it flies beautifully forward. Dun, dun, but then dun, 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 it's a piece of dun. chicken. <laughs> and it just starts veering way right no. and flies straight into the classic <laughs> chandelier that is on the ceiling. It is high up there <laughs> and it hits one strand and all of us collectively hold our breath <gasps> as one strand disconnects swings from down. the top no. and swings across and just is penduluming above the audience, <laughs> you know. 150 feet in the air, there is a, a thread of glass. It was like the oh, chicken no. tried to Tarzan swing off yes. the chandelier. Some people say that like the chicken was stuck in another part of the chandelier. Because I didn't see it come down. <laughs> I didn't see it come down, it. but I also wasn't looking at the ground after no, that. I was looking no, at the people who told us that said that during the show, they looked up wow. and saw chicken. <gasps> no. So not only did you did you break a classic chandelier. <laughs> there's a piece of a, chicken in there. There's a chicken. And by break, oh what I really God. did is... That you just lost. All it. of these are just hooked on. So I just somehow unhooked it. It was swinging. Ew. I did. Very high up. And it's an antique classic. <laughs> like, who knows? That's maybe a million dollar chandelier. So old. It's big. It's probably at least a hundred thousand dollar chandelier. <laughs> and apparently because to fix it and clean it, it has to be totally brought down from the no. ceiling. It has to be. Oh, now it, I feel It's on bad. this giant rig. It's going to have to be lowered <laughs> down. It's going to have to have a team of people do it. They're going to have to do it. However, this is giving them a great opportunity to clean it. I bet it never gets cleaned. I bet cleaned. it's filthy. And mm -hmm. I bet this is oh, like... Oh, now it has chicken in it. A blessing in disguise. <laughs> I kind of want the chicken to stay in there so it's like the ghost of the theater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like... Well, I heard there's the chicken, chicken up there in that chandelier. You know, and every now and then you get a whiff here. of fried chicken. Well, <laughs> in these classic theaters, 
all through the back alleys. People have signed their names. They've mm-hmm. put their tour posters right. up. I just wanted to have a lasting impression of us <laughs> in that theater. Yeah. And I thought, what better way than to lodge a piece of chicken above all the patrons of mm. the shoe boat? You know, it's the craziest thing to me is that our tour manager was like, well, we got to pay for it. And I'm like, yeah, well, we have insurance, though. We paid all this money for tour insurance. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's not what insurance is for. What is insurance for yeah. if not for the moment when you accidentally hit a chandelier with yeah. a piece Sense of chicken? Yeah. I think we file a claim and let them tell us that's not what the insurance is for. I agree. Right. I've right. been meaning to follow up with him on that. Because, like, also, I didn't mean to hit the chandelier. No, it was right. an accident. And, and I, it, yeah, $2,000, that's a lot of money yeah. for an yeah. accident that yeah. actually yeah. hurt no one. Just hurt think no of one. how many chicken tenders you could buy with $2,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> so many. That's a lot. Basically, actually, that incident is what stopped me because what I wanted to do in Philly was get enough chicken nuggets for every single person in the building. But having known that in Boston, I just wasted $2,000. <laughs> I didn't want to propose that, but I really wanted every single person, not cool. only the audience, but the people working, the people mm. backstage, the mm. office manager. I wanted everyone in the building to eat a piece of chicken at the same time. True, and if true. you were a vegetarian, I even wanted to like get some like tofu nuggets, yeah. you know, <laughs> and just like just have it so everybody could share in this moment because I thought it would be so unique. Well, it was like communion. I mean, it was. you were like, <laughs> you literally said, I'm a fried chicken. God. You and said, I would often say, my body. my body broken for you. <laughs> and I would hand it out. I would also tell them if they didn't get chicken, it's okay. It's not about the chicken. It's about what the chicken represents. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and Some then, would say that's sacrilegious. Others would say just right. <laughs> it's sac delicious. Sac delicious. We had a lot of those like just transcendently weird but also beautiful moments on the tour like a room of 1700 people taking a bite of fried chicken well okay it was only a couple hundred but, but it was rip it up There's i think hundreds of people in I a think room boston really did a good job because of that moment and everything happening i think there were like six to seven hundred people it's who crazy. got it crazy and that's such a yeah. cool like the energy wow. in the room to be a part of that is so wonderful and special um and we had other moments where Oh, that like uh, we we got to do my birthday at the Beacon Theater oh, yeah. in New York, mm-hmm. which the coolest thing that was the biggest show we had on tour. It was over twenty five thousand, twenty five hundred people. <laughs> twenty five thousand would be very different. <laughs> um, it was a huge room, a classic theater. We got to be in my home city for my birthday, and during there was one part where I came out on stage. And they spontaneously, everyone in the room just at the same time agreed, we are going to sing happy birthday. And that was just the most wonderful and special moment of my life. Yeah. It, so uh, cute. It was just so cute. And then you guys came out and gave me a hug. It was really, yeah. it was really cool. It happened to me in New York too at the book signing. Or it was yeah, in New Jersey. I forgot about and that. And it, it's so sweet when you have all these fans who they know that it's your birthday <laughs> and they like, it's very like it's kind of like a little emotionally overwhelming to have a bunch of people yeah. sing to you. No, it's, it's like, what do you sweet. do there? It's like, I, I couldn't, I just, it, it was weird and yeah. it was awesome. It's uh, funny backstage. We were freaking out because we had planned a birthday <laughs> celebration later in the show. <laughs> we were like, Oh no, the you cake's to not ready. They scooped us. Yeah, and so we just sang happy birthday twice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was great. Yeah, you guys had programmed in a happy birthday in the show. And we we had some issues early on in the tour where if you like try and change what's programmed, it could crash the whole system. So about 15 minutes after the whole crowd spontaneously sang happy birthday, they had to sing happy birthday again. Yeah. And they did it. And they, they, <laughs> they were, did it. They God were happy to do it twice. <laughs> and they were just as confused as we all were. It's really weird because we're, we're now over a week away from the tour. Uh-huh. And I have these moments where it fe- it almost feels like this weird dream, dream. that I had. Because our yeah. lives were totally different. One, we were living on the road. But every day we would do these big shows where you're interacting with over a thousand people at once. Uh, you know, we would, we would meet people face to face and we would do meet and greets and everything. And I... I, I'm very prone to I'm, I, I haven't been able to talk to you guys about this actually so I'm curious like I'm very prone to when I go from something where I have a ton of stimuli and, and a big creative project and then it's over I get depressed because that thing is over and I and my body mistakes the fact that I'm not doing something constantly with just depression and they so, even said all of our touring uh, compatriots were like oh yeah you're gonna be sad after the yeah, tour's over because I got sick immediately <laughs> But it's I'm trying really hard this time to practice uh, like self-congratulating and, and appreciation, hmm. 
which is really hard for me. But instead of thinking about, okay, what's next? What's the next project? What can I do? Uh, what's going to be the thing that gets me back there? I'm trying to live in this moment and and just reflect on it and say, wow, I did something really fucking cool, mm-hmm. which on the one hand can sound like I'm up my own ass, but it's, I, I am really trying to appreciate like we did such a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Way to fucking go me. Way to go us. Mm-hmm. Good way to not get depressed to, you know. I'm trying. Congratulate <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I, I sometimes will do a big uh, like uh, creative project and then get a little depressed yeah. after. I will say that I was actually uh, depressed at times on tour because oh, really? I missed my family so mm. much. And there's Makes like sense. these weird pockets where you're not doing anything and yeah. your schedule's all flipped where you basically have these lazy mornings and then it's a lot of activity and then it's hard to fall asleep. I don't know. That just kind of got me down because I'm used to just waking up, doing stuff. I, there were some mornings where I was like feeling bad about either sleeping in or not. Did you doing, have I don't guilt? know. It's weird. Yeah, guilt? maybe a little guilt. Yeah, I had guilt. Just, just like, like I should be doing something or I don't know. I just there, there were some times where I felt a little down and maybe it was on a I was experiencing that on a day by day basis because the nights are like, whoa, it's so exciting. And yeah. the morning's like, whoa, there's not a thousand people screaming at yeah. me. Yeah, oh, maybe but that's interesting. When I got home, I just it just felt comfortable. It felt natural. Mm-hmm. I'm like, here I am. I'm back at home. This is great. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I I haven't been getting down. I'm just I'm no, just, like, I haven't happy either. To be back home. It does and feel I'm like delighted. a dream, though. It right. does feel I, like, like I can't believe this that it weird really other happened. thing that wasn't a part of my life. Like I was just living somebody else's life, but I guess it was my life. Because when we were in it, it was like, oh my god, we have ten more shows. I can't even imagine what that is. And now that it, it just blink and it's over, yeah. and I almost can't remember it. It fe- I guess you're right. It feels very out of body. Uh, I, I will say it does help knowing that we have two more shows in Australia Yay, coming up. Yeah, uh, but we're going to be in Australia. What is it? September? The twenty third and twenty fourth of uh, September. September, Melbourne, and then Sydney. Following that, so there, it's going to be a little bit of a crazy time because we're doing back to back shows. But they yeah. got to fly to the other <laughs> two city different and cities. Yeah, get set up in a nuts. theater and do it. So it'll be a little crazy those two days. But Are it's going to be fun. Yeah, I guess we, we have, have to. to. They're too far away. Oh wow. Aren't they? Well, those are going to be super fucking dope. The tickets are on sale right now. So if you're in Australia or if you're just like nearby, (laughs) yeah, take a little tug butt over. New Zealand's pretty close, right? Just like pop over the pond. Mm -hmm. Close enough. LiveNation.com.au. Oh, wow. Is that where you go? No, I believe so. I mean, you could also probably go to TryGuys.com. Yeah. I'll say that for me, we came back from tour and uh, I was like, okay, that's over. That's exciting. But then I had immediately my first episode of the show that I'm on on NBC mm. the day after we got back. That's crazy. <laughs> Which, yeah. I guess, it's like, so literally back from tour, like, okay, now NBC is tweeting at me. Uh, <laughs> this is very, this is very <laughs> surreal and it's a totally different uh, mm-hmm. thing. And, you know, getting to see uh, the performance is pretty awesome. They also like used our performance on all the social handles. So like Whoa. before the episode even aired, it was on their IGTV. It was on their Twitter. It was on their Facebook. It was on their YouTube. NBC then put it on their Facebook and Twitter. Like, the organically wow. tweeting it from their own handles so that's like huge. super huge very exciting and it's weird because i did all that literally the month before the tour <laughs> is when we were shooting everything yeah and we're like shooting that and i'm also like trying to get ready to like produce all the music for the tour so and it's our, been a very and our music- book was coming and out and the book was coming out <laughs> yeah, it, was- it was like very crazy but also musically because i've doing comedy music i've been doing comedy music for so long to be competing on a show doing comedy music while simultaneously writing and producing the comedy music for our touring show. Uh, it was like, I got yeah, to be immersed lot. in so much music. It was really great. And now I'm like good at French horn again because we played it at every, <laughs> at every show. <laughs> so I'm like, Oh, I'm pretty good. And like halfway through the tour, I was like, Oh, I remember all the stuff I used to play in like solo and ensemble, like competitions. I could play mm. Mozart's concert oh, Rondo. You I were know. playing the, the Lord of the Rings theme. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was beautiful to wake <laughs> I up was to here every for day. It. Da-na-na. Um, as a quick time out, because there's so many stories that you have from time out. being on a, a <laughs> <the> segment. <laughs> time out. Time out in which we figure out what the fuck we're going to talk about next. Because uh, you have so many stories about being on a reality competition show, and I want to hear about it. But Miles, did you just do that little finger thing that you do when it's yeah, time? I fingered to, you. Yeah, we're, okay. we're at about That's an hour. Old. Okay, so for the second time in a row, we will. Let me give you just the. the I want to hear all the about smallest it, though, story yeah. from the first episode. Okay, which really I think paints a picture of how. 
uh, stressful and anxiety written these conversations can be. Now, I'm I had a, in. I had a great <laughs> time actually on the show. However, the first uh, day of this shoot or the first shooting day. So you have all these days where you're doing all the rehearsals and stuff. But the day that our episode air or shot for this first episode, we were like, we got the call sheet. It said, okay, we have to be here at a certain time. We had to get there in the morning. And they're like, we got there like, Luber, we're getting the hair and makeup and costumes right now. You're going to be first to tape. We're like, awesome. We're first. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. And then they send us to the, the vocal cord coach who just gets your, it's not really a vocal coach in the sense that he warms up your voice. It's more he actually clears your voice of shit that's going to sound bad on their microphones. Wow. Oh, so fuck. like he basically gave us insane <clears throat> lozenges and other stuff that like opened our sinuses to this maximum space. It was Whoa. very bizarre. Whoa. But we did all that. We got in the costumes, got in hair and makeup. And then they're like, okay, we're a uh, quick production meeting right before we shoot the first episode. Everybody here? So here we're doing like, okay. Also, we just changed the running order. Uh, Luberger, you're going last. Ah. <laughs> so you get all this anxiety. You get prepared. We got our oh. voices warmed up. Our hair was perfect. <laughs> our suits are on perfect. We're like ready to go. And then like, okay, you'll actually go on in about two and a half hours because that's the pace of shooting a TV episode. So it was awful emotionally because we were so ready to go. We we're so warmed up. And now we have to keep our voices in a perfect place for two and a half oh, hours. Oh, wow. So did you just not like talk? We like barely talked and we just drank throat coat tea that all the time and like just tried to stay hydrated and tried to like not think about it. But you can't not think about it because you're watching the other people. So you're kept in this cold stage next to the main stage oh. and you're watching the other competitors on the TV but they turn off the audio and they get judge feedback oh. uh, so that you oh, wow. can't know how things are happening but so you can judge by the faces kind of yeah so we're just watching we're just watching everyone else compete and they're all great and yeah like, oh, of course no <laughs> no they're all great which is great for the show but it's scary for you to go last because you're going last they do things like to to kind of mess with you, right? They keep asking you the same questions over and over and over again. They kind of, I mean, it's not really to mess with what? you. I think it's just producers trying to get the sound bites they want. Okay. But they do ask you a lot. Like, it sounded like they were fucking with you when you told me. It does. I don't think they're ever fucking with this. I think they're just trying to get the correct small sound bite. But it, to you, it feels like, yes, I'm, of course I'm excited to be on the show. And the, yeah, I'm very excited to perform for Jeff Fox, really. That sounds great. Like, no, I don't. I hope I don't mess up on stage. I, 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 yeah. I'm, <laughs> and you have to do all these little interviews like the second before you go on. Not just like oh, before wow. you go on. Literally backstage while the notes are giving being given to the performer in front oh, of wow. you. You're doing a little two camera interview about how excited you are. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously, so were you stressed? And it was a big live audience, too. It was a big live audience. Oh, I was man. stressed, and I really don't get nervous for I performing know, I'm anymore. Surpri- you're, you never, I've never seen you nervous visibly. I was nervous because we're about to sing mm-hmm. and we're on stage with a bunch of fog. Fog makes it a little bit harder to sing. Oh. We didn't have in ears. We just had stage monitors. Ooh, and we had done tough. a sound check the day in-ears before, the not the day of. So mm-hmm. you just have to trust that the sound people saved it, which of course they didn't. Mm-hmm. So the monitor is not exactly as good as we needed to be. We also had a lighting plot that was only rehearsed once. So it's like <sighs> very nerve wracking because well, you, and- you're basically going on live mm-hmm. and you, you, you're you know 50% prepared on the technical end, but 100% prepared on the, you know, and if, end, if anyone hasn't yeah. watched the show, first of all, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> on TV. I'm on TV. I'm on Netflix. But, but it's like, it's not just a singing or a comedy competition show. It's like these fully produced numbers. And yeah. so I totally, I, I yeah, I'm based on the things that we've done that are produced. The idea of not knowing if the lighting or whatever is going to be at the right place at the right time is. Or is, if you're like how your mics are balanced, even. You don't hear hmm. how you're balanced until you start singing. Huh. And uh, like I, I think that the show is pretty well mixed, but I think it could have been mixed a little better. But well, you know, it's course. being live mixed, so yeah. like they're just doing what they got. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was, it was really great, and we obviously advanced to the next uh, round. So and then, are you? What is it next it's week? It's the thirteenth. The Tuesday, the thirteenth is I think when You're we're on round our, two. Round two. All right, we'll we'll talk about more because I want to hear what Keenan's like in real life. What does he smell like? <laughs> are, are his hands soft? <laughs> And then uh, also just the idea of being on a reality show is totally fascinating. It's wild. Uh, yeah. But one more thing happened when we were on tour, and that is that Miles Nation is strong and it is thriving and it is growing. <laughs> there were so there was so much custom made. First of all, custom made merch everywhere. Like uh, people got us gifts, but people would make their own shirts, which was so cool. But there were so many Miles Nation shirts. Someone on stage shouted out, shout out to Miles Nation. And I realized it's because it's the only branded thing on this podcast. We don't have a name for our followers at all. We don't have anything else that's unique except for Miles Nation. So we're going to, maybe you guys will be the 
the tri poodles. Uh, the tripod. Right, poodles is pretty funny. Tri poodles. All right, we're in. First one's in. Tri poodles. Yeah. We just so call now- them all residents of Nastyville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure out some something else because I'm gonna try and compete for your heart. It's gonna be the tri poodles versus Miles Nation. Yeah, the nation's strong. And, I, it's uh, really strong, and mm-hmm. I I'm getting a little jealous over here. <laughs> but uh, at this point in the podcast, Miles, there <sighs> there are like five people with. <laughs> but that's. Big. That's you True, know that's how many custom lot. shirts were on the tour. Let's say let's say three hundred. Uh, people were tweeting me <laughs> custom shirts. <laughs> there, were there were a lot. Wow, I mean, yeah, I mean, we only saw the ones at the meet. This is though. the coolest one that I saw. Keith has this really insane uh, rock and roll eyeball shirt in the tour. Mm. And someone, I don't know who you are, but in Philadelphia, I saw you in the crowd, and someone made his shirt. That like, how the fuck did they know? They only saw pictures on Instagram and like leaked videos. They that cosplayed was not like as. A- yeah, because people crazy. cosplayed wow. as our tour announcement photo. Awesome! Someone cosplayed as what Keith wears in the show. That's yeah. impressive. Wow. That yeah. means you're Quick seeing turnaround. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but like you know, five out of the hundreds we saw, it's a percentage that's no, more I'm than I'm one percent. Joking, because yeah. yeah. my bit is that I like to put down. That, so <laughs> that's that's my running bit. I will say uh, it's been a wild <laughs> ride, and um, I'm I'm ready to be canceled. So <laughs> oh as soon God. as that can happen, <laughs> this I'm, next advice is going to wow, be raunchy. Funny. Well, guys, Miles told me to freeze my grapes. Do you know how big of a choking hazard that is? <laughs> Miles Nation is canceled. officially <laughs> seceding. Well. Every now and then in life, mm. you need someone to turn to. You need some advice. And then in, in this next portion, we like to turn to Miles, the youngest, the least experienced, to give you sage wisdom. This is advice that will go for Miles with your host, Miles Fogg. I like resent it now. <laughs> it is my favorite part of the podcast. <clears throat> What's up, Miles Nation? Oh, <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> How y'all doing tonight? We're going to get so many I tweets like about, why are you guys being mean to Miles? I like, I like this whole bit. Do you want to be the kindest little sweet guy in your whole house? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be as sweaty as Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Oh, you oh, know I do. Girl. As clean as Jason The Rock Statham. That's mm-hmm. not his name. And as you. kind as Meryl The Rock <laughs> Street. He is my rock. <laughs> Take a bubble bath with Epsom salts Epsom. and <laughs> stop up the stopper really big. Not a printer. Uh huh. People is this a repeat? have been asking yeah, have me. We t- have we not talked about this before? Bath salts. People have salt been asking me, how do you stay so clean? Right. And so soft. And so soft. But I haven't. Been. I've been taking Epsom salt baths and that's nightly? Uh, not nightly, but <laughs> once a week at, at minimum, twice a week at maximum. Wow. It's because I've had a sinus infection for a while and I've been trying to get rid of that. Well, that part made me less interested. Bath Stop too. up your stopper really big. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? Stop, Stop up, your, up stopper. your stopper what does that mean? really, really big. Really big. <laughs> so mean? you know how in your bathtub you fill it up to a certain amount? There's like an auto water dripper right oh, right so sure. like it'll get it out there not everybody has that yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. Know what most that is. most tubs it's have like a safety prevents it from going all the way up it's yeah. like a drain at the very top oh, that most tubs have a safety tries to prevent you know water damage on the floor mine doesn't yeah. i like to basically live all bathtubs do almost all bathtubs have a little be. just look again for if, it if it's not if it's I'm not look there. tonight and i will edit in if i have one but i have like a very <laughs> weird jacuzzi bath that but if you turn the jacuzzi jet on, it just shoots water everywhere. <laughs> so it's totally garbage. It's not, mm. you can't use it at all. Wait, Wait, so Miles, are you advocating to stop the I'm advocating, upper yes. stopper? Yes. Wow. How do you do that? You, there's and products, also, that's not safe. There's products you can get. Well, I'm a safe little camper. Nope. And obviously, I'm paying attention when I bathe. I don't so know. So here's what you do. You can get a little plunger thing that like suctions to the top of oh, the little stopper. covers it entirely. It goes just like... And you suction it right there. What are those wow. called if I want to uh, get one? T- uh, you type it in into Google. Suckers. It's called tub suckers. <laughs> oh, we don't serve tub suckers here. <laughs> you damn sun I'm sneezer. A sun sneezer. <laughs> but you need a deeper bath. Wow, that's the villain's name, tub suckers. <laughs> tub suckers. Tub suckers. Tub suckers. Mortimer tub sucker here. That is filthy. Played uh, by... Richard. Um, Rando. 
<laughs> I threw him out earlier and it was totally wrong. But Amanda. He was good for Tom James Sager. Corden. Wow. James Corden. Is Corden. As a villain, I mm-hmm. love yeah, it. I think he'd be a hilarious villain. Well, he's like this the, whole thing mm-hmm. is a little tongue in cheek. You know? He's like the mm-hmm. cheat, the it's cheery. Sun, the, the hero's name is Sun Sneeze. Yeah, which is not Sun like Sneezer. a very heroic thing. So yeah. it's all kind of. I, kinda, I mm-hmm. feel like Corden would be great as a cheer, cheery mayor who actually is a huge dick. Yeah, mm. I love. Yeah. He's often in the tub answering the phone, <laughs> <laughs> sucking his thumb. Sub <laughs> sucker. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, the, the, you want a deep dub. That's what's going to get you there. I, I cannot recommend enough either Epsom or Magnesium. When you get dip your little body into that bath, <laughs> it feels like this like crazy uh, hit of pot, frankly. Miles, I it, can't believe you take baths. You're a giant like me. I know. It, 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 I feel like when I get in a bathtub, I feel like you're trying to put a bunch of hay in a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't put it in the bowl. It's not going to fit in the bowl. It's mm-hmm. going to spell out all over the bowl. <laughs> Your stupid yeah. limbs are too big. It's too. I am generally too big, but that's why you got to get the tub sucker. Yeah. <laughs> because if you get the tub sucker, it's going to be deeper and yeah. you're going to be able to and get in there. Your knees are still crouched. Well, you got to choose. Yes. Yeah, knees, wanna, yeah. knees or toes. I, that's going to be one of my oh, one of my like must sit directly up and then yeah. your knees. One of yeah. my must haves when I have a house. Yeah, is me a same. Big ass, tub. a long, oh, tub. Yeah, a long, a double wide, yeah. double long, mm. a basically a pool in the house. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I know the podcast is running out, but a pretty funny quick aside is we renovated our house with this in mind. We're like, <laughs> we gotta get the big boy tub, big tub. and we ordered this. Beautiful. It was like 70 inches long. It's like a big old, big old tub. Uh, because we looked at our architectural designs. We're like, cool, the bathroom's six feet. This is going to be amazing. Turns out we were looking at the designs from the like middle of the way. stud to the <sighs> middle of the stud oh, rather no. than oh. inner wall to inner wall. There's a good like two inches on each side plus the drywall so call it like an even five inches uh and our tub that we ordered did not fit in the size of the bathroom because of this little <sighs> little tiny architectural drawing reading that's a, mistake that's heartbreaking it was heartbreaking you know what i'm getting from this is that short kings rule the world i'm great y'all the freaks <laughs> top people suck you i'm great <laughs> Uh, life's built for me. Yes, uh, astronauts. At, are Tom astronauts Cruise. short? Oh yeah. Wow. Because you know it's, you don't want a big you know. tall guy in space. <laughs> Why <Ew>. not? Because <laughs> no, yeah. you have to build the capsule bigger. It's so big. Yeah. Yeah. You want the sun. It's like it's really like guy. weight size. You could all never that. ride on Sea Biscuit, and I want you to know that. Right. No, yeah, absolutely right. not. Jockeys, you could never. Astronauts. Sea Biscuit would never have you. No, I would hurt him. <laughs> you know that he really stole the nation's heart. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good horse. Well, anyway, that's the been our podcast. Oh, I feel so sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a blast today. Uh, this has been, that's all the time we have for today. We'll, we'll catch up to you about why I'm awesome next time. Uh, we have a tour. We're coming to Australia. Come see us. We got merch. We got a book. Oh, I did, you know, in the book I wrote about, I wrote a joke about not having a bathtub and it was a lie because uh, I thought it was funny and it's a big regret of mine. So if you go get the book, you can circle that and write Zach is a liar. And then and then tweet it at me, and I'll like it. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Check us out on oh. YouTube. Give us your secret. We can do a 20-minute 20 20 minute <laughs> tangent on it. Uh, until next time, Keith, hit us with the official tripod theme song. When you hear us sneeze, it's like a breeze between your knees. It is the tripod. Stay beautiful.